So today let's try to fix my test load, which failed. In the previous video I decided to solve the problem by building my own instead of fixing it, but I think it would be still interesting to try to fix it or at least find what failed in it. I was actually using it a lot and the display on it was failing anyway. It's sticky taped on it because the double-sided tape fell off and this flexible connection was broken. I put some piece of metal here pushing on it as a desperate solution to its poor contact. The display is intermittent, but it still could be used just as a test load in combination with something else showing the voltage and the current and the power. So let's try to dive into it. Let's remove this plexiglass on it so we can see the components better and we can measure them. There are two screws. And this piece of metal, which is not original, I added it. And here's the failing display with its connection, which is probably having a poor contact. Here's the power transistor, the two potentiometers, various inputs and outputs. There's some inductor, probably in some buck or boost regulator, and multiple chips. The current sensing resistors, 50 milliohm each, it seems. Some voltage regulator, another chip, small chip, three transistors. And on the other side of it, there is this heat sink with a fan, which is only turned on when it gets hot. So there has to be some temperature sensor, some LED here. It can be also powered from an external supply instead of the supply it's loading. And some other connection here, a beeper. It was beeping if I tried to make it dissipate more than 35 watts. But it survived this condition several times, but finally I probably managed to bake it. So let's try to do some measurements. Let's test the transistor base to emitter. 0.6 something volts, seems right. Base to collector 0.6 again. Even though this should be a Darlington transistor, so I guess the voltage drops maybe should be higher. And a collector to emitter 0.03 volts, which means either the transistor is damaged or this is some other circuitry connected to it through the board. An NPN transistor should be showing no conductivity from collector to emitter. Let's unscrew and desolder the transistor to test it better, because the transistor of course is the most likely component to fail, especially when you overload it. The screw is out, the heat sink falls off. This is under the heat sink and desoldering it. And it shows conductivity from collector to emitter. And of course the collector at the middle pin is also connected with the tab, which also makes the heat sink connected to the positive of the supply. This is an NPN Darlington transistor. Let's try to replace it. I don't have the exact one, but I have this one. Let's compare the data sheets. Both of the transistors are NPN Darlington transistors. Both of them are 100 volts. The original one continues 5 amps of a collector current, the new one 10 amps, better. The original says 65 watts, the new one 70 watts, better. The original junction 2 case, thermal resistance 1.92 degrees Celsius per watt. The new one is slightly better, 1.78 Celsius per watt. Lower is better, of course, here. And the gain of the original one is minimum 1000, the new one minimum 750. The new transistor has lower gain, but I guess it's not a problem because the design has to have some headroom. And it's a linear application, so the switching speeds of the transistors don't matter. And here is the safe operating area of the old one and the new one. But now let's explain the power dissipation of the transistor in the datasheet. This datasheet says it's 70 watts. And the total power dissipation in data sheets of transistors is definitely one of the most misunderstood things by beginners. This is not the maximum power of a linear power supply with the transistor. This is not the maximum power of a switching power supply with this transistor. This is also not the maximum output power of an audio amplifier with this transistor. And it's also not the power dissipation this transistor can handle in realistic conditions. Note that it says total dissipation at TC, temperature of the transistor case, at or under 25 degrees Celsius. If the transistor is dissipating 70 bloody watts, it's always going to be hotter than 25 degrees, unless you only run it in arctic conditions or give it some water cooling or peltier cooling or whatever. Basically something completely impractical. 
In reality the case of the transistor is always much hotter than this and thus the dissipation of the transistor has to be lower than 70 watts. And the sheet of the other transistor actually says it, the rate above 25 degrees Celsius. And this is actually the maximum dissipation versus its temperature and the maximum dissipation goes down all the way to zero at its maximum temperature. You cannot keep the transistor at 25 degrees Celsius because the heat sink is always much hotter than the surrounding air and the transistor is hotter than the heat sink, especially with an isolation pad. And the transistor outer surface can never stay at room temperature when it's dissipating a lot of power. And if you're asking how they came up with 70 watts, the maximum temperature of the transistor is 150 degrees Celsius minus 25 and this is 125 degree rise above the room temperature and divided by its thermal resistance junction to case basically the thermal resistance from the silicon to the outer surface of the transistor and you get 70 watts. This basically means that when the transistor is dissipating 70 watts the silicon is going to be 125 degrees Celsius hotter than its outer surface. Such dissipation is not realistic and you can't keep the surface of the transistor at room temperature and this rating is just comparative, just to compare different transistors. The higher the better. Let's clean the old heatsink paste and put a new one on it. And let's install the new transistor in it. Let's solder it in place. The transistor's in a place and let's test it. Let's plug in this charger I fixed in one of my videos and let's plug this one into this. 5 volts, virtually no current and increasing the current 1 amp, 2 amps, 3 amps, 3.5 and, and the charger shuts down. Let's try, let's say, 20 volts, 1 amp. 2 amps, now it's overloaded of course I guess. This is limited to about 35 watts. Does the display work? Well, the backlight is intermittent but at least it does something. Twenty five watts. 30 watts and over 35 a warning and it seems to be working now this thing 12 volts for example it should go it goes up to almost 3 amps and then the protection kicks in Nice! And of course the fan turns on after a while when the heatsink gets hot. It's working other than some poor connection here but I don't want to touch it. I think it's working good enough now and I don't want to make it even worse and I'm using it with this one anyway. Maybe let's just put a piece of foam under the plexiglass pushing on this connector. I reassembled it, it's still a bit intermittent but when something works partially you shouldn't poke into it because then it might not work at all. It still works well as a load. Let's keep it running at 34 watts. And the temperature of the transistor seems to settle at about 93 degrees Celsius. I was actually expecting it to get even hotter. This is the transistor and the current sensing resistors are also getting hot and this chip otherwise it's not that hot. I guess this small heat sink with a fan has about the same thermal resistance as this big passive heat sink. So it's fixed and now I basically have two test loads. That's it and if you like my videos please consider supporting my channel on Patreon using the thanks button or subscribing. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.